All right, I'm gonna be straightforward here. Information on this railroad is very scarce. I've scavenged almost every source I can find online about this, and there are still things I simply cannot find. Hell, there isn't even an official map anywhere online. So look at this not as a speedy history at a glance sort of video. Look at this as a compendium of all the knowledge I was able to find about this subject. All right, enough rambling. Let's take a look at Ohio's robot railroad, the Muskingum Electric Railroad. Cue the intro. Let's drive some motherfucking train! behind this great nation is coal. Utilization of heat and power is a necessity to progress. In America, by far the greatest single source of heat and power is coal. It's no secret that coal is one of the most important substances moved by rail. Railroad lines were often built to where the coal was. So it's no surprise that when a new reserve of coal was discovered in Cumberland, Ohio, the railroad would soon follow. In the 1960s, the American Electric Power Company began excavating at this site, just southwest of the small town of Cumberland. Most notably about this site, the largest single bucket digging machine, the Big Muskie, operated here. Unfortunately for AEP, the coal mine was far away from their power plant in Relief, Ohio a full distance of 20 miles. There were also no direct railroad links between the two, so they had to get crafty. In 1968, the American Electric Power Company formed the Muskingum Electric Railroad, which would run the 20 miles between the coal mine in Cumberland and the power plant in Relief. The railroad was entirely electrified, with electric power produced from the power plant being used to power the locomotives shuttling the coal. Those locomotives in question were actually pretty interesting. General Electric would use the MER as a test bed for some new technologies. GE would supply AEP with two one-of-a-kind E50C electrics. The E50Cs were constructing using two upgraded E44 locomotives. They were very aesthetically similar to the E44s, however they had more horsepower at 5,000. The locomotives would be numbered 100 and 200. The MER would also later acquire a 100-ton switcher in 1993. It would be the only diesel rostered on the fleet, and would be used for switching and maintenance. As for rolling stock, the MER operated a large number of Ortner 100-ton coal hoppers for moving coal, as well as two business cars, one named Oak Lane and the other Dover Fort. What made the operation so exciting was its odd method of control. The Muskingum Electric Railroad was completely unmanned. The E-50s would run with a string of 15 hoppers in a push-pull manner, similar to how a commuter train runs today. A handful of coal hoppers were fitted with headlights, air horns, and a bell to act as the front end of the train. The trains would use a looping track at either end to load their cars and turn around. Train 100 always used the west loop, while 200 always used the east. Even the loading and unloading of the hoppers was automated, with truck mounted equipment on them receiving signals to open the hoppers. It was an incredible feat of railroad engineering for the time, especially considering the fact that the average American railroad looked like this. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? However, it wasn't just the operation of the trains that was revolutionary. The MER had a multitude of other innovations that set it apart from the other railroads. Truly a class act. The line initially maintained an interchange with the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. The BNO had had trackage in the Cumberland area even before the MER was built. Unfortunately, this interchange was abandoned sometime in the 70s or 80s thus making the MER isolated from the rest of the American Railroad Network. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. And so is that in 2002, the mine in Cumberland had run out of easily accessible coal. Also by this time, the engines were aging and had been working almost non-stop for nearly 24 years. The line would sit stagnant for two more years until it was torn up in 2004. Every trace of the railroad would be lost to time. Both E50s were scrapped, along with all of the coal hoppers. All the track and trackside facilities were torn up, and today, remnants are very scarce. However, not all is lost. Both of the railroad's business cars are preserved at the Hawking Valley Scenic Railroad in Nelsonville, Ohio. I have also read that the 100-ton switcher was sold to a sugar company in Northern Ohio. However, I cannot find what sugar plant or whether or not it's still in service. 
So is it still around? Fucking, I don't know, plausible. <laughs> Hang on, there's a good ending here. <laughs> There's this little orange switcher that works at the metal grain plant in Upper Sandusky, Ohio. And this might just be Muskingum's little switcher. The most recent photos of it are from 2021, so hopefully it's still operational and doing well. Now, one last thing. While researching this video, I started to do what nobody has done before, at least that I'm aware of. Make a map of the Muskingum Electric Railroad. And here it is. We'll start here in the north at Cumberland. Here's where the old Baltimore, Ohio interchange was, and this is where the loading facilities were in Cumberland. The railroad then moved south, mostly following the 83 road. For whatever odd reason, Google Maps still has most of the old right away still marked, despite having been abandoned nearly 20 years ago. So that's pretty nifty, I guess. South of the Renrock Road crossing, there's this building that looks like it might have been rail served at one point, but there's no way to know for sure. It's at this area, where the railroad crosses the 78, that Google stops displaying the right of way. South of here, the line roughly follows an access road until reaching the facility at relief. And no, it didn't just end here, I just have no clue as to how the rails were laid out here. Now the trains didn't carry the coal all the way to the power plant, this coal conveyor carried it on the final stretch of the plant. So that, my friends, is the Muskingum Electric Railroad. It exists as a blip in the vast sea of American railroad history, with little to no remnants still around today. And with very little documentation online, it's no surprise that this railroad has faded into obscurity, despite the technological advancements it made in its day. Thank you very much for watching and sticking to the end. This was a difficult video to research and put together mainly because of the lack of information. I'm still not sure if I got it all correct. If you have any information about this railroad, leave it in the comments so we can all learn from it. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe for the next episode of Talking Trains.